Hello and welcome to Scott Plays and another topic of the week discussion. Firstly, apologies for us being a couple of days late. I've been working on some game design ideas and that's just been taking all of my time recently. Plan to get back on schedule with the next video um, and I should also have time to get back to doing some game overview videos. Anyway, last week's topic was box sizes. Uh, and I asked in the Facebook group, um, what do you think about box game box sizes? Uh, would you like to see games come in smaller boxes or larger? Would retailers benefit from games being in smaller or larger boxes? What do publishers get out of using the box sizes they use? Should box sizes be standardised? What games are good examples of the right sized box for the game? Now, um, I was hoping to get a bit more um, interest in this topic. Um, and uh, coincidentally, and quite interestingly, um, Stephen Bonacore and Ignacy Trevicek um, discussed this a bit on their podcast uh, recently. And because um, it's, it's a topic that seems to come up quite a lot, uh, particularly when boxes are uh, oversized for their components. And so, yeah, I was hoping to get more f um, discussion on it than I did. However, the three comments I did get uh, were. The first from AJ, who said, The smaller the better. Clans of Caledonia is perfect, just big enough to store everything with zero wasted space. And then Timo said, Matching, uh, still space so I can sleep cards, also not more air in it like Lay's. Um, I assume he's referring to the uh, crisp manufacturers um, anyway uh, and finally Jeff um, said I prefer the old Avalon Hill bookcase size boxes roughly eight and a half by eleven inches and yeah I pretty much agree with what was, was said there um, yeah Clans of Caledonia is a perfect example of um, the right size box for what you get in the game. Uh, I mean, I've seen people complain that they haven't, they can't get everything back in the box, but I've not had that problem. Um, you have to be a little bit organized, but it's it's fine. And, you know, everything goes back in. There's a little bit of room for, um, like I've got the deluxe coins, I can get those in, uh, the metal coins that is. Um, so yeah. I think if you buy the retail version, you should have no problem getting everything in. And it is it is just the right size. Uh, another one like that is Dinosaur Island. Again, now in that case, you have to take the, the insert out. Um, with the insert in, you won't get everything back in the box. But take the insert out, and it, it's just one of those uh, cardboard shipping inserts. Um, so, you know, there's... You're not really wasting anything by taking it out. Um, yeah, take out the, out the insert. Be a bit organised with how you're putting everything back in and you'll get it all in and it'll pretty much fill the box. And that's what I like. I like a box that is the right size for the contents. Um, an example of the opposite of that where... A game came with a box that is clearly too big for its contents um, is Splendor. Um, in this you basically got, I think it's about a hundred cards and maybe 30 poker chips and some punch board tiles and that's it. And I don't think, I can't remember, but I don't think the punch board tiles even come on punch boards, they're pre-punched. Um, as far as I remember, 
Um, but the box is uh, your sort of standard Euro size, um, probably sort of about the Avalon Hill bookcase size, I think. Um, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, and it, yeah, it's just complete waste of space. Like, probably 75-80% of the box is just air and a plastic moulded insert. Um, I've decanted the cards and the poker chips and the tiles into um, a deck box. Um, it's, it's one of the larger deck boxes, but it's, you know, it's not anywhere near the size of the box that the game comes in. And it's just, I, I don't, um, well, no, I, I kind of understand why publishers do that. Um, there is a, um, a perception that people have of if you're paying X amount for a game, then the box should reflect that. Um, however, how much more does it cost to ship bigger boxes? Um, how much more... How much space gets taken up on um, game store shelves because games come in such big boxes? Uh, you know, I there's I don't know, I'm not sure what qu quite the right word for this is, but um, I know that. Uh, Certainly in the UK, less so in the States, but in many countries, um, game store real estate is expensive. And so you want to be able to put games on the shelves that are going to sell, which means it's difficult for store owners to know what to buy because everything is going to take up shelf space so I'm thinking well if the boxes were smaller store owners could take slightly more risk in buying games that they wouldn't otherwise knowing that there is then sh space on their shelves for those games and they might sell, and they're more likely to sell at some point. Um, to there's a um, sort of selling concept of the long tail, and I think you know the um, a lot of sectors, uh, um, retail sectors. Um, have this long tail concept because they can keep stuff in stock. I mean, like um, bookshops are a good example, I think, where, you know, yes, there are um, the new releases that get put out and there's a certain amount of churn of those, but you go into a bookstore and look for a game that's, oh, sorry, not a game, a, a book that is however many years old and you'll probably find a copy because it's been on the shelf for that many years and um, yeah they they get that long tail effect of that book is available it's on the shelf somebody eventually will come in and buy it but with game stores it seems like you don't get that effect or I, mean, I don't know I'm not a retailer and I um, don't speak to many retailers about this kind of thing so I'm I'm sort of making assumptions here but I would have thought if game boxes were smaller stores could stock more games and there would be more of a long tail effect going on um, Anyway, that's my thoughts.
I think smaller boxes would be better for a number of reasons. Like I said, the long tail effect, reducing cost of shipping, um, reducing packaging, the use of, you know, um, resources like wood to make the cardboard and, and stuff like that. It, it just, it seems like there are so many benefits to moving towards having smaller boxes. Um, also standardised boxes. I don't understand why there aren't standardised boxes. And this is one of the things um, uh, Stephen and Ignacy talked about. Um, and I know, I know certainly Portal games are moving towards having... And in fact, I think they are now they have pretty much standardised boxes and one of the things Ignacy said was there were there are games that um, they produce the Polish versions of where they insisted <laughs> that the um, games were repackaged into a new box uh, because that's the size box that Portal uses for that type of game. Um, and I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see that uh, be adopted by more companies in the industry and for it to be standardised across com companies. Um, you've got a certain amount of that already. There's sort of the standard ticket to ride, ticket to ride sized boxes and stuff like that. And I, mean, I think we all know that there's the sort of big square boxes that fit nicely on Calyx shelves and um, then there's the sort of what seems to be almost the standard Euro sized box which I think is about the same size as a, the Avalon Hill bookcase uh, size boxes that Jeff mentioned um, and so yeah why can't we do why why can't the industry move towards that and and the, and the thing is you often get a game that is almost the same size as another another game box another one of these more standardized sizes but isn't quite and so you know you put it on your shelf and it's just a little bit too big or too short or you know and it just doesn't look right or doesn't quite fit on the shelf um, and yet yeah, issues like that will just disappear if we have standard size boxes um, is there anything else I want to say I don't think so um, however as I mentioned Splendor that is uh, one of the games I want to do a game overview of probably will be the next one I'm not sure exactly when I'll get that done but I'll do it fairly soon um, so yeah thank you for watching and um, be sure to join the Scott Plays Facebook group if you haven't already uh, I will be posting another topic of the week um, in there as soon as I finish recording this um, link in the description as usual uh, and yeah join the conversation over there and please come back and watch more of my videos in the future.